Hey there, I'm just hanging out in the shop, running this uh, Tazbot and doing a little test print here. This is a uh, rose. It's a pretty good uh, demonstration workpiece for 3D printing capabilities. I just figured I'd get out the camera and uh, talk about it a little bit. Uh, I'm not an expert in 3D printing, but I do have quite a bit of experience with uh, a couple different versions and styles of machines. Um, personally, myself, I have an M3D Micro from the Kickstarter. That's the uh, very s cheap sub $300 printer. I also have a Cube that I bought many years ago. And up until recently I had a DaVinci, although I got rid of it. Uh, and then up at work, I run a Replicator 2, which is probably the closest machine to this. Uh, out of everything I have. And we also have an industrial size Dimension 768, which is, you know, professional 3D printing if there is such a thing. Um, but the Replicator 2, I believe, like I said, would be probably the closest comparable to this. Uh, the biggest difference between the Replicator 2 and this is that the Replicator has an enclosure on it, whereas this one is completely open. Oh, I should also mention this is a Tazbot 5 with a uh, hexagon uh, extrude head, that's the 0.5 millimeter orifice extrude head. Uh, the Replicator 2 is similar in price range to this, a, a bit over $2,000. Uh, but the print quality of the Replicator 2 seems to be pretty good. Now it's, it's all enclosed and it has a heated bed. This one also has a heated bed, uh, but it's not enclosed. You can see though the uh, print quality seems to be pretty decent. I, I thought that this thing would be worse than it is, especially considering the fact that uh, much of this machine is actually 3D printed in itself. Like you can see that mount is printed, this mount is printed, this whole thing actually. Uh, when you look at the head, just about everything you see except for that stepper motor on the side, everything you see is 3D printed, including that gear that's back there turning. Now obviously the, the actual drive mechanism is not printed, it's made of stainless, but, but the machine itself is uh, definitely designed to be pretty modular. I mean, just looking at, it's like you've got uh, those guide bushings that are riding on the rails, those are just being held by printed components. And you can see that just a whole lot of this thing is, is manufactured in a very cheap way, which is, uh, or I shouldn't say cheap, I should say just an inexpensive way. Uh, because it seems like companies have caught on to the fact that the machine itself doesn't need to be precision machined uh, for an enclosure of, of all it's doing is just protecting all this uh, actual precision stuff. Uh, but that's an interesting interesting uh, thing that's setting this machine apart from everything else. Um, the replicator, I would consider to be probably the most cost-effective solution to get like a serious hobbyist level machine. Uh, but this one is a pretty good contender though for, from what I've seen. I've got, uh, let's see, here's this, here's this sample card. This is made out of HIPS and it's kind of kind of ratty on the outside but it turned out better than I thought. The HIPS material seems to be a bit more flexible during the print compared to this over here. This is ABS. Uh, the ABS is what I use with the other machines most often, uh, and it's you know treated me pretty well. Uh, most of my stuff I make out of 3D printed parts or ABS. Uh, this thing, however, the dimensions were a little bit off on it. It has it actually prints with a like a little cap component, and they're supposed to thread together. Although it didn't actually end up working. They a little bit too tight. I printed it with the full uh, raft, as you can see on the outside of it, and then there's, I guess there's the rest of it there sitting on the trash pile. This right here is not the raft, this is just the brim, is what they call, just to help it bond to the first layer. Uh, but dimensionally, this thing seems to be looking pretty good. It's got a lot of thin walls, and they're completely unsupported when they overhang like that. Uh, and it's it's about halfway done right now. I think it'll be, yeah, I'm running, uh, it's 53% done right now. So you can see it's, uh, it'll be a little bit taller than that when it's all finished. A good model just to test out the capabilities as far as I'm concerned. Uh, but basically I'm cautiously optimistic about this thing. It, it runs off G-code, which is kind of a good thing for me because you can, it's like you can see, oh, I won't be able to look at it. I guess I got to change the model here. I gotta go to full settings. Yeah, that's fine. You can see the start and end of the module there for the G code, which is uh, an interesting thing. I don't really plan on using that much, but it's it's nice that it actually has that ability that you can go in and edit it. Uh, and ultimately, we might end up adding additional 
uh, hardware features to this machine just to see what we can do with it. Seen some interesting things out there where guys are doing that stuff. But uh, anyway, I gotta go to work pretty soon, so I'm not sure if I'll have time to finish this model and show everybody. But uh, this is what it looks like right now. It seems to be working pretty good. Uh, this machine is only about a week old, so I guess we'll see what happens when it gets finished. Uh, but anyway, uh, if you have any specific questions for me in relation to this compared to any of the other printers I mentioned, like the Micro, the DaVinci, the Replicator 2, uh, or an expensive one like the Dimensions, you can just go ahead and ask, uh, and I'll try to help you out. Uh, but uh, until then, uh, I guess that's it. So thanks for watching. Bye.